Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this episode, we're going to be looking, taking a look at the replica PCB for the keyboard for the SX64. This is the last piece that was required for the full kit of PCBs that Rob Taylor is going to be releasing fairly soon. I did speak to him on it, and hopefully he's going to be doing something this month or hopefully next month. So we're getting very, very close to the release of the full PCB kits from Rob. And I've been really proud about being part of the team um, to produce these and bring these to you. So this is the replica PCB and we're going to see today on whether we can turn it from one of them to one of them. If you're enjoying the videos guys please hit the subscribe and the notification bell. Um, the SX64 episode 4 should be coming up. We're on episode 3 today. Um, episode 4 should be coming within the next sort of few weeks to a month and that'll show you how to get the audio back because you lose it once you take the CRT unit and replace the LCD screen so that'll be on episode 4 so if you're enjoying these videos as I said hit the subscribe hit the notification bell and, and drop me a comment so without further ado let's get to building one of these let's get to it Okay, so let's get started. So this is the original PCB, which I sent down to Rob Taylor for reproducing. As you can see, it's just a, a single-sided board where everything is laid on one side, hence a single-sided board. <laughs> um, I, I were a little bit... <sighs> We've reproduced these boards, well, Rob's reproduced these boards. Let's have a look. Here's the new one. This is This is a new reproduction board by Rob Taylor uh, and his team which I've been a part of which I'm quite happy about that um, as you can see on the bottom there if I can show you might not show up very well there you go reverse engineered by Rob Taylor Bebo Ian and the thanks to myself and the Commodore lad for doing this complete set so as you can see on the back of the board, it's completely different to the original. This is just like a bit of Bakelite board that they made it on. So I were in a little bit of a dilemma on whether to put the original board back in or whether to rebuild this keyboard on one of these new replica boards. Um, I was toying with the idea. Um, I'm a bit, a bit of a purist. I'd, I'd like to put things back to original. But as you've seen, as we've been going along building this SX into what we want, um, it is a bit of a Frankenstein anyway. So I decided that I was going to do away with the original board and put it onto a replica. These membranes, I'll put a link in the description for you. Um, you can pick them up. That it wasn't dear, they're only about £24 plus the postage um, I think they came from Ireland the, These membranes are really horrible They're, they're well known for going down um, One of the main things is that when this is over here It's got a clamp bracket that pushes down to make contact on the, on the board And when you decide to take it off to clean it It rips it all off and pulls off um, another tape pad that's up back of here that's stuck down here as well and it all goes to crap to be honest <laughs> so what I've decided to do I've got the new membrane here this is this is the brand new one that I've ordered it also comes with I don't know whether you can see that on camera or not but this little bit of space in between it that is designed um, so it gives a little bit of space away from these keys when they get impressed um, which is a really good idea and, and thank you for making that and adding that into that So yeah, so I decided that I wanted to use the replica board um, We'll go away with the original um, We're not going to be using the original membrane at all anyway, so that can go away um, 
So we're looking at these, and, and if you'd see down in this bottom corner here, I don't know if you can quite see, um, we've got J1 and J1 across there. Um, I'll put a picture up so you can see just over there somewhere. Um, that had a link bar on the reverse side through here. That, if we test it with the multimeter, So if we go across them two J1 points, they're not shorted. That just, when I'm looking at this, this board here, that point there, that J1 point there, runs down to this pad here, which I believe is the brown wire, which is quite possibly be the earth. So if we just test that there, look from J1 down to that point, we've got continuity. So if we test from that point there, down to one, we've got continuity. The pad underneath J1, just here, may as well not be there. It makes no difference at all. But what Rob's done is included on the back side of this board, I'll show you, is, is the link already built into the board. So we can see that them two points are joined on the replica board, and on the original, they're not. So thank you for adding that, Rob. That's, that's great, that it just stops people messing about. I don't know if you can see now, I'll try and zoom it in a little bit, but there's a link bar across there. I'll pop that picture up again for you, so you can have a look. Um, so if we look at the back of there, that's shorted across. So we now know that that's not an issue at all. That jumper's there being replaced on the back side of that board. Fantastic stuff. Um, so it's just a matter of soldering all the wires back to the board. There's also an LED up at this side, um, the solder's in from this side, you, you drop it in that way, LED goes through the hole and solder two points at this side. That's for your shift lock light. So, let's just set that one to side a minute. Here's the board that I've decided to start building. I'm not going to bore you watching you solder all these wires back in. They are a bit of a pain. Um, when it came back from Rob, Rob sent me this back loose. Um, so thankfully I had another SX that I could pull apart and just see where the colours went to make it easier to re put that back in. Um, as you can see on there, that's that link at the side just there. Um, and there's your LED that we soldered in from this side. So this next step is getting this membrane on. Let's just move the original board out of the way. I don't know whether to sit it inside here or not. It's got the pad on there. Let's take a look at this. I don't know why they do this, but I'll show you. You see this point down here? For some reason they fold it over. Does anybody know why they do that? Is it even needed? Can it not just not be there? Can it not just be cut off? I'm going to put it back exactly how it was, but I'm just wondering why Why does it have to have that bend over on that membrane? Hmm, very strange. If you know, drop us a comment, will you? And let me know why. Um, very strange. And when we take a look at the new one, it has the same thing. It has this lug here, and it also has this one here as well. So I don't know whether they need to be spun round or not. I'm guessing that they don't. Um, yeah, we'll just leave them where they are, I think. It's no biggie. So let's set this down first. I have cleaned all of this board off with IPA especially around these contacts here, and I've gone all over the contacts on the board to make sure that they're all clean, and more so after we soldering it to get the flux off the board. So this one, we're gonna to have to try and get on as best as we possibly can. 
because it doesn't line up very oh. is it not lined up? yeah that looks pretty good that let's do the same with this one together a little bit because of the static and um, just jiggle them around a little bit you can just use a little screwdriver and just go in the holes just to wiggle around So we need a couple of keys just to lock that into place. So what should we go for? So we've got the F7, F7, F1. So let's put them ones in and then I'll find some for the other side over there. Control button and the shift button now. Shift button should go down here. And the control button should be the one down there. So that should be holding us in place. Right, I think we need to put this into its housing now. So what I'm doing here is I'm just wiggling around inside them bolt holes that, for that clamp, just to move that space and about underneath the PCB, just to get that in line correctly. Um, so I'm just taking a look at the other keyboard and we notice that this has a little tag at the top there. So that tag went to the top. So now I'm going to try and get these screws in through here and into this bracket. I may have to just take you off screen for a minute while I'll put these screws in. So sorry, I'd take it off screen a little bit while I get them screws started in there. I've not tightened that up just yet. I've left them loose, um, but that's exactly where that bar wants to be. Right, okay, we've got them screws started in there now. As you can see, if we go through the back side of that board, I'm just going to tighten them up. See if my other little Phillips will go because I want these tight. Pull them down either side equally because it's squashing that sponge at the other side, if you remember. That's down to the bottom. That's down to the bottom. So that should be squashing that down now, nice and tight onto that board. Right, so this is it. We're, we're 
crack on and put all these keys in the montage of putting this back in here. So I'm going to crack on with that now and we will come back to you as soon as it's done. Ah, oh, that's the one that I made a... Ah, right, okay. The reason why that wire was sticking and I was messing around with that is, is if we look inside there, it's got a white tag lock inside there. So this one was broken when I got it. So I've had to 3D print one and it seems like it sticks a little bit as it goes in, setting and out of there. Um, it should free itself up. It should free itself up over time once it gets a little bit of use. Um, but if, if you've got one of them little things inside there, um, please let me know. Uh, I could do with replacing that one uh, and putting it on an original one. You see, it, 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 it does work, but it, it, it's far better with the original, to be honest. I don't know what they call it inside there, but I had to 3D print that to make that work inside that one. Hence why it's a little bit sticky. But we can soon come back to that. At a later date, if somebody can help me out with one of the an original one of them, it would be really nice. So that's this keyboard rebuilt. Yeah, I've just had another quick look, see if whether I had one of those for that Y. But as I said, if you, if you've got one, I'd much appreciate it. Um, all these keys are absolutely awesome now. They all feel really good, all responsive. That wire's a bit crappy because it stays down sometimes. But it does work and bear in mind we've got that spacer sheet in between the here as well now. So that should make a big difference between parting that and instead of it being stuck down pressing on it all the time. So we need to get this back into its base, screwed down um, and then we can uh, plug it in and try it out. So this is the base, we do have to have a little bit of a repair on this corner yet. Um, I haven't decided what to do with this yet. I don't know whether to just rebuild it with some filler um, and flat it down and paint it, or do I stick it into a mold? Do I put my other one into a mold and then sit this inside and fill it up with resin inside that corner? Um, and I'm looking at the original over here. That corner doesn't really do much. It's not gonna be much in the way. So we could resin fill it in that corner around there. Um, it is cracked on this side as well, um, and down this side, it, there's, there's a crack running straight down there. You can see it on this side, look. So it's only just being held in, in place. So that's what I'm thinking of doing with that. If you've got any better ideas, um, or even if you've got one of these front covers, that would be ace. Um, just drop me a message. These clips were broken as well when I got it. Um, there was missing, so I've re 3D printed some of them. Um, and put them back in there. Underneath the bottom side of here, all there is is a little spring that goes down a little shoulder in the middle, which allow, which pushes the button back up. There was missing. Um, I was trying to think of something what to do, and my good lady said, why don't you use a spring out of a ballpoint pen? <laughs> and do you know what? It worked a treat, an absolute treat. So if you have got one of these and you're missing a spring, grab a ballpoint pen and use a spring from there. So I'm just going to put this back together so it's away and it's secure. Um, we'll readdress the cosmetics at a later date. So we're looking good so far. I uh, should be able to do some plastic welding or something on that to be able to recover it. But I'll do that at the same time as repairing the, the case cover when I get the time to do that. Um, if you've got one of these covers, hit me up, let me know if you've got any ideas for repairing it. What I was thinking of doing is gluing it, um, but I didn't want to get glue on the other side because it does look quite neat and tidy when you look at it this side, when you push it together. But if you put glue on it, we're going to end up with glue all over around here and it's going to look a mess. 
Um, I thought about holding it together and just using the soldering iron and melting the glue across it. Or, or maybe push some staples in, heat some staples up and push them down so it gives it a bit of support around there. If you've got some ideas for repairing this, I'd love to hear from you. Um, they're just my general ideas of going to be able to repair that. It's got a broken tag off this side, it's got a broken tag off the other side, it's got a broken tag up here. So it's not brilliant in this cover anyway. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to pop that back in um, just to for aesthetics and so it, it can never get broken. Why doesn't that sit down? There's something holding that side. Let's have a look. The circuit board's held up off that edge. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Hmm, I think we may have run into a problem. You see that? It's rocking. So it seems that on the replicas, which is a little bit strange, because as you can see, oops, as you can see, if we lift this border back out again, look, tilt that over there. So this is the original board, and if you look over here, oops. Is that the right way around? No, it's not. It's the other way around. So, when you put that over there, the original board, it goes straight over it. It clicks over it. Straight on. So does this side. Yep, that goes on. The replica, let's see. Well, it did, but it went on with a crunch, didn't it? That's going to be difficult to get back off again now, aren't we? Damaging it. So the iron is a little bit tight on that. I don't know whether it's this cover because it has got a little bit of a knock on that from when it got damaged. So it could quite possibly be that. But that little dowel hole there is very tight on there. I'm struggling to get it past. Let's see if we can sit it back down again. Hmm. So it might be as wise just to open them holes up just a little bit. Maybe half a mil, something like that on either side of them holes. Um, so it can sit in there properly. As I said, it might just be me on this one. Um, I won't say me as such, but it might just be my, my keyboard, if you like. See, that's another little piece that's came off that original PCB board that's stuck on here from original so when you pull this off this tears off and it sticks to the board and then you lose all the carbon contacts straight across that point so that's going to go in the bin that's better so all I did is just take a screwdriver you see you know it doesn't fit in there yep so all I did is push on there and keep going look until it goes through just a little bit of a little little wheel and then pull it back through that's enough just to open that all up a little bit which helps it go back over them points but that's secure back down now that side's still a little bit wiggly can you see it that side's not so we might have to do it to that side as well Yep, that's loads better. So if you get these boards, guys, um, if you get the chance, um, or Rob, if you're listening out there, please, if you can increase them holes by 0.5 mil um, either side, it will help in the fitment of this board. Um, as I said, it might just be that pillar, because that pillar looks like it's had a bit of a jolt. 
and um, you could see down down the pillar edge um, where it was slightly shoved over so it may be in transit damage that I'm not sure but still I think if you these two little dowel holes if they were increased to 0.5 um, of whatever the diameter of them is I would look about a three mil something like that I could be completely wrong Rob, Rob will know um, so yeah Rob if, if you can just alter the thing just by 0.5 for these little two dowel holes it, it should make a massive difference okay so does it work I guess it's um, time to go plug it in and let's see if there's replica board with its new membrane is up and running right so here we go this is his replica board um, with this keyboard that we've just built and we're just going to go through the keys and make sure they all all work um, so arrow yep one two three four five six seven eight nine zero plus minus pound sign clear home instant delete yeah it's flashing that's fine We'll bring the cursor back down so we know that shift and that one's working. So control and Q. Where was that one there? <laughs> it's changing colour so we know control's okay. So Q, QWERTY. Okay, U, I, O, P, at, star, up, restore key. We don't know so if we do run, stop, restore. That zero is a screen back off again, so we know his run stop works. Shift lock, there's light lights up on shift lock. I'm going to press Q. I'm going to test the Commodore key with Q. That works. I'm going to test the left shift with Q. That does the same as control by the looks of things. So we know that that's okay. So, worthy. <laughs> yep, yeah, to did all them ones, didn't I, before? Syntax error. So A S D F G H J K L bracket left bracket right equals I said bracket there but it's colon and semicolon for shift with the right shift you get them two brackets um, equals were there return we know works because we get syntax error we know the Commodore key in the bottom left corner and the shift key is okay now um, so we shall go with Z X C V B N M comma, full stop, backslash, we know shift worked for those cursors, so that's up and down, and we've got a left, and we've got a right, we'll try as function keys now, um, F1, it doesn't do anything but you can see the cursor flashing, so we know that that's working, F2, F2, <laughs> F3, F5, and F7. Awesome stuff. So thank you Rob for reproducing that replica board. Um, we've now got a replica board built with a new membrane into our SX build. So there you go, from the video you saw that we reproduced um, the keyboard um, brought it back to life with the replica board. In the video you did see the original board um, and like I said in the video I was quite tempted to put the original board back in um, but the one that we're building and putting the LCD screen in and etc and things like that it's now a little bit of a Frankenstein um, so I thought I would go with a brand new PCB um, in there as well so that's what we've got we have got a few of these boards spare kicking around um, so if you're interested in one of these um, let me know and I should be able to sort something out for you if you're enjoying these episodes guys, please hit the subscribe, the notification bell and the thumbs up. Drop me a comment in the bottom, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, coming up we should have some more good stuff coming up, we've got some Atari stuff. Um, we've got the SX episode 4 that's coming up, we'll show you how to do the audio. I keep saying that but it is going to come soon, I promise you. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots and lots of things coming up. So if you can show us some support, um, check out Captain Commodore. Check out Yark, yet another retro channel. Check out Retro for You and Joseph Retro Bits. They all do some great stuff. 
um, a couple of them are new YouTubers, so please drop over there and show them some support. So that's it for this week, um, we'll see you on the next one. Bye!